The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Merry Christmas, everyone, from us here in today's sunny Australia to maybe you will be having a white Christmas. This is something I've never experienced. But I hope you all have a very blissful Christmas. And you know that bliss is a word that poets invented to rhyme with kiss. So from us here in Aussie, we send you all a big hug and a, crisp, and a kiss. Christmas is a time when we look back over the year, what has happened, what we've achieved, the friends we have lost, the family we have lost, and I particularly miss my dad this Christmas. It's the first time in my whole life I haven't had Christmas with him. I love the immortal words of John Lennon's songs, and these are our wishes for each and every one of you. So this is Christmas, and what have you done? Another year over and a new one just begun. And so this is Christmas. I hope you have fun. The near and the dear one, the old and the young, a very merry Christmas and a happy new year. Let's hope it's a good one without any fear. And when I was typing this up, I thought how fortunate we are to be living in countries without any fear. You know, we are the generation that really doesn't know war, and I have no concept as to what it would be like to live in the war-torn countries. And I think it's a good idea that we remember these people that live in constant fear every day. So I wanted to review a few things that we have done during the year. And one of the things that we launched this year was the Ministry of Sewing. Do you like the name? And this is um, like a, sort of like an online tut tutorial magazine, and you pay a subscription fee of $150, which um, in the 12-month period, and you pay for the 12-month period, and no matter when you join, you have access to the discounts on the design set. You have access to the um, webinars, and there is also a video for the projects as well as an ebook that you can print. And this has been very successful. We've had some wonderful projects. There's a gallery. And if you wish to purchase, we have one more to go, which will be next February. And then we will be, before that, we will be sending out a renewal for subscriptions. And I think the ladies that have been on it have really enjoyed it. And I am trying really hard to try and teach. You know, there's so many out there that are new and are afraid to tackle these projects. And this is the way that you have access to me, you have access to Simon, the video, the webinar, you can ask your questions, and you have your ebook. So this was our first lot of projects, and you got the directions. I think there's a few missing, but basically it was these wonderful um, wedding projects. But of course they can be reproduced in any color you like and you've got the directions, the video, the webinar, and you can access that still through the Ministry of Sewing on our website. This is fairly timely, and this was our second one, and we decided to do Christmas in July, and you got these really three fun projects, easy, easy to make, all quilting in the hoop, and a really fun, fun project. And not only that, you learn different techniques. And then we did a series of purses. And this is one of them, and it is my half-hour purse. Yes, I know, LOL. But it started off as a half-hour purse. And that also teaches you how to make the purse step-by-step, step, um, how to do the fringing, how to do the beautiful flowers and design in the middle 
and our lovely little um, tassel or person hands of butterfly and the tassel. I then did um, a series of pillows. We were asked for some pillows and probably this pillow that's up on the screen now has been one of my most asked for pillows because I have used it in, um, in pictures but never given the directions. So this was our last one that we did and believe it or not, those of you who are in the Ministry of Sewing, I have the next one ready to go. And this is another one of our Ministry of Sewing and I will be sharing a little bit about this with you today later on in the webinar. At Christmas time we do look back over our year and you know one of the things that I, I researched was on, and I know none of you are doing this, but unfortunately I am growing old and I have said this in lots of my workshops, happiness shines from the inside out. And one of the things that was mentioned to stay young is always smile. Smiles turn the corners of your mouth up as opposed to down. Stand tall and feel happy. So I wanted to talk about happy as you don't get happy, you acquire happy, you don't acquire happy or achieve happy, you just decide to be happy. And I hope this is how you will be over Christmas in the up coming Christmas period and the new year. We can all make conscious decisions of where we want to go, where we want to be and how we want to feel. We also did two accredited academies this year. We repeated our online academy of the past year as well as we had the inaugural academy of accredited tutors. And we will be repeating that for those who missed out this year in April 2013. But I wanted to share with you some of the quilts that um, our members have already completed. They're really, really gorgeous. I'm just waiting for my next slide. This is Jill Wilcox and she did her quilt very similar to the one we did for the Academy. There is a lot of work in it, but you do get four months to complete it. These girls have completed it way ahead of time. And in fact, Jill has completed the three additional projects that you get also, along with your Academy book, which we've found all the mistakes in now for those, those wonderful ladies who have worked through it, as well as you get four DVDs, um, which has all the pictures, e-book, videos and all your designs on. This is Elaine Pollard and Elaine chose to do hers in a monochrome blue. It is very, very beautiful. I love the choice of colours that the girls have chosen. They were all allowed to choose whatever colours they like. This is the beauty of doing an online class and then you can choose your own fabric. And this is Carol Bonetti's. I love hers too. I would never have thought of doing these colours, but the colours are quite stunning. And you can see the use of colour has been done with great expertise. And we do suggest how to choose your fabrics and your colours. And this is Judy Archibald's, which is another blue one, but totally different to Elaine's, as it has the soft gold and blue in it. And of course, Blue and gold are complementary colours on the colour scale, colour wheel. By the way, all these quilts are double sided and in this academy I introduce my floating piecing technique which is brand new for this academy and I don't think anyone else has done this and this is Lonnie Magnusson and Lonnie I know you can't be here tonight. I'm Sorry for those of you who are angry with me and your friends who are angry with me because I changed the date. Simon didn't do this. I did. I have a long-standing hairdressing appointment and as it's just over a week before Christmas, I couldn't change it. And I'm sorry, my hair roots came ahead of the Academy dates. And I'm sure a lot of you will understand that. And this is Sheila, Sheila's quilt and she chose soft pink 
and burgundies and you can see the difference that the colours make. And they are all really, really stunning quilts. And I know some colours will appear appeal to others more than some colours. And this is just showing you the difference that colour makes. And our next quilt is Maureen. And she's used a lot of burgundies, but she's introduced soft golds and pinks. And they are all stunning quilts. And I congratulate these girls who have put in such hard work to get these glorious quilts finished. And I, they are truly winners. And there is a lot of work in this. I'm going to, Simon told me I have so much to cover in this webinar, so I'll try and move through it quickly. Have you always wanted to have decorator items you see in room settings and exclusive shops, or always wanted to make personal gifts to give at Christmas and birthdays? Well, now you can with the Clever and Crafty Design CDs, which are a series of quick, easy, and inexpensive projects for the home using embroidery designs to enhance and change items that you would usually discard. Now, these are the three um, design sets, which if you go to our website or if you go to any of um, stores that carry these, there is a special going on with these design CDs with the Jenny Haskins R&K promotion. So make sure you take advantage of it because it is really, really great. And we have three, Trash to Treasure, Gracious, gracious Gifts, and Bedroom Bliss. And all these items have been done with embroidered decoupage. If there is anyone that doesn't know what embroidered decoupage is, it means that you embroider your designs out over a synthetic fabric sandwiched between two layers of dissolved magic and then heat cut it out. Or if you do not wish to wash the stabilizer out of your design, then you embroider them over organza and cut away magic and heat cut the designs out. Then you have a freestanding design that you can apply to anything. And it is the we have done whole quilts with it, garments, shoes, jackets, bags, home deck items, transform ready-made cushions, pillows. And here you can see, I'll very briefly go through them. These design sets have e-books on them. That means you can print out the directions and photographs for all the projects on that design CD. Um, there are also videos on our um, Jenny Haskins Designs website, I'm sorry, Facebook page. And also you get the designs, you get the ebook, and everything is there for you to go. So I'll roughly go through these quickly. This gorgeous little cupcake stand has been made out of a recycled old silver goblet that was picked up for three dollars. This is a stack of CD cases. It's an old CD case. I've thrown hundreds of those out. A discarded glass or an old candlestick spray painted. And this is a trash basket spray painted and made into a gorgeous cloche. Candle in a jar. Look how gorgeous this looks. This is my old juice bottle that I was throwing away. And yes, you do get the labels on there to print off also. And this is my, whoops, I'm going too quick here. This is my lovely, um, oh, okay, I'm just going back. Sorry, I'll, it was slipping through on me. I'll just wait for the slide to come up. And I'm one ahead of myself or I'm behind. What you can see now was our lovely um, cupcake stand. And again, here's a close-up. My old juice bottle, lovely label, beautiful um, lace heart that you get. And by the way, one thing we've introduced here is doing embroidered decoupage with a fabric lace by the yard sandwich between it. It has to be a synthetic one. And then you can heat cut it out and you get the lovely lace blouse really quick and easy. And old, where's my little thing here? An old pepper grinder recycled, chipped plate, doily. Um, so many things you would have at home and you would ordinarily throw out. You won't be throwing them out now. Um, 
And here's our little cupcake um, stand. And you can see here this, this is a CD stack case. And um, you give all the techniques of how to make. This is just gorgeous. Um, and it's one of my favourite pieces and you could put anything in that and give it as a gift. But we thought it was gorgeous for little individual birthday cakes or if you had to take some, a small cake or you wanted to give a gift. My beautiful um, antique butterflies and this is on a discarded vase which we put atop an old um, pepper grinder. And my next slide that will be coming up is a close-up of our pocket pillow. Now you can put little treasures in that, family photos. I have this on my bed with a couple of photos of my beautiful grandchildren in it. You learn all the techniques. And the actual flowers on the front is a brooch. And so we teach you how to make the brooch which is detachable as well as the pillow and the special way we ruffle up our ribbon at the top. So you do get all these fabulous techniques as well as ideas. And this is my candle in the jar. As you can see, we've decorated it with inexpensive pearls by the meter, an old brooch, beautiful lace design, and another technique of the lovely flowers on the top of the candle. So the jar looks equally beautiful with the candle lit and the lid off as it does with the lid on. And when you've burnt out your candle, you can add another candle to it or you can use it to store treasures in. Another close-up of the project. Um, Robbie and I just had so much fun making these. We really, really enjoyed them. They were just so nice and I've got to tell you that a lot of these projects are now sitting in my home. And this is Bedroom Bliss. And these are some quick and easy ideas, again, from all recycled things that we had at, in our possession. We, did, we bought a couple of things, but very few. The lampshade was an old brown lampshade that I had. And I stripped the fabric off the shade and was left with the frame. And then this is a really cool idea to do a shabby chic lampshade. On Pinterest, shabby chic is just gorgeous. And this is a fabulous idea. And you get step-by-step -step directions. A lovely little keys to my heart pillow. Um, and you learn how to do woven fabrics and laces as an insert in the applique heart as well as the lace by the, by the Mita fabric lace flowers. And this is just a lovely wall hanging. So easy and quick to do with things that you'd ordinarily not keep. You know, here in Australia, people cannot sell their old furniture, um, old bits and pieces they have in their house. I carried home an old wooden fly screen from a house that was thrown out the front. Carried it about a kilometre, by the way, under my arm. You should see it. I'll post it on Facebook and show you how gorgeous it looks now. Close up of keys to my heart. Um, an old lace doily that Robbie had. It's a heart. This is a double applique. Again, it's embroidered decoupage. So you learn about three techniques there. And this is our beautiful bottle with an old um, door handle at the top. And this is my floating diamonds technique. So there are so many techniques that you learn and you get step-by-step -step photographs and directions on your ebook that you can print out as many times as you like. This is my lampshade. I spray painted the base, which was black. And you can see that I have glued my lace over the struts. And then I have a solid piece of lace between the str every second strut. And then drops of lace and beads between the struts. And the gorgeous little flowers to cover the bottom. They are double-sided. So the back is equally as beautiful as the front and I matched my lace on the straight struts. So I fussy cut the lace. 
So the back of the lace on the strap, where's my arrow, matches the front, the back and front match. So it's like a double-sided lace that encases the strap. It's, I just love the lampshade. And when it's lit, it gives this gorgeous glow and really shows off the lace. I couldn't do it with the light on because you couldn't see the lace. And I know some of you will have purchased. I have a collection of dress forms. And here we've dressed ours up. It was an old wire one. I added a little bit of shabby chic paint so I didn't paint it completely. And then we added a cute little dress, ruched it up at the sides. And we put our really special little quick and easy 3D lace flowers, a button in the middle of one and an old brooch in the middle of the other. Don't throw away anything that is old. We have a lovely little box that anything we have that we take off, shoe clips, broken hair clips, single earrings, they all go in that box. And these are very practical. And if you don't have a discarded sweater or cardi, we do, I just cut the sleeves off and made these gorgeous arm warmers, you know, and if you keep your wrists warm, mine are rather elaborate, but they do look lovely, and everybody asks me where I got them. You'd be amazed how much warmer they keep you when you have these on in winter. And you can have a lightweight sweater on and just pop these on your arms and they keep you deliciously warm. And the lovely lace cuffs look gorgeous coming out the bottom of a jacket or a coat. And again here, here is a close-up of another one of our decorator shabby chic bottles. And you can see this is another technique that you learn how to make the little ribbon flowers using a clover wheel. So these are just giving you ideas. They look gorgeous in bedrooms, bathrooms. I have two of my bottles standing on my beautiful mirror that I spray painted. And these are just pearls by the yard in the center of the heart, around the heart and on the bottle. And you can see our floating diamonds technique here. You are going to just love this technique. And there's so many applications that you can use these techniques for. Don't limit them to what I'm sharing with you. And the beauty is that everything on here is easy, easy, easy. And each project, I mean, you don't even have to watch your machine. It's all done in monochrome. If you choose to do it in color and you're doing embroidered decoupage, I do suggest you use the same thread in your bobbin as your needle. And this was an old wire heart I had in the bathroom. Uh, it had um, like um, bark flowers in it that were perfumed. They fell to pieces. Spray painted it and put some beautiful Art Deco Lady soap in them. I don't use soap anymore. I use liquid, but these soaps were too pretty to throw out. And they give a beautiful perfume in my bathroom. They can be hung in a wardrobe. You can hang it on a door handle. There are so many applications that you can use this for. Our next slide is a close-up of a $3 canvas from a thrift store. And the embroidered decoupage is applied to it, spray painted glue, spray painted. And the word love has been purchased again from a craft store, spray painted. And then we've added the lovely little lace daisies to emphasize it. There are so many things that you can do with these concepts. I think the best gift that God has given me is my creativity and my ideas. And you know, those of us who are given much must give it back out. And this is what we are trying to do. Our gracious gifts. Um, upcycle a plain pillow, upcycle shoes, um, and give you some other gorgeous ideas that you can do the designs with. The, the applique designs on the pillow, that they have been done with um, velvet. And unless you are using the same or similar color thread to the velvet when you're doing the embroidered decoupage, then I suggest you put a soluble topping 
over the top of the velvet to hold the pile down. And this was a plain pillow and we just, and when you do embroidered decoupage, and I didn't finish that sentence, I know, you can just glue it onto a purchased pillow and add a braid. We added shisha mirrors around um, our mirror, our, our pillow to upcycle it. And they're so quick and easy to do and so inexpensive to do. So the next thing I want to share with you is our next slide coming up. Totally, we have two different colour stories, so that's why I'm sharing the two different colours with you. And incidentally, the beautiful purple on the side is an old candle holder that we spray painted and then put a jar on the top of it. The screen you're seeing now, for those of you who have not seen Simon's amazing quilting and piecing, piece to resistance, um, design set and quilt directions and ebook. This is taking a totally different tack on it and this is our pillow using lace for our um, uh, patchworking and it just looks stunning. You can see the difference things make. This are all pie tins. I love this jar and yes, both of these um, labels are included on the design CD. We actually spray painted this bottle. I tea dyed this lace to match the vintage look of the bottle and my tea dye is Get a pencil and paper. I'll give you a minute and come back to it. And this is a beautiful vintage lace embroidered um, like a chatelaine, but it's just for your scissors. It's a scissor case that you can wear around your neck. It is really stunning and you will love doing this. So my tea is to tablespoons of instant coffee, two tablespoons of instant coffee, two tea bags, black tea, cheaper the better, two tablespoons of um, vinegar, brown or white, and two litres of boiling water. Allow the tea bags to seep. You can leave them in if you want to, don't let them burst. Um, and then you place whatever you want to dye in the mixture. The vinegar sets it. The tea takes a slight pink out of the coffee. Uh, the coffee takes the slight pink out of the tea. And remember, it will go as dark as you leave it in there. Rinse it out occasionally if you want to check your colour. And remember that anything you do this will will dry two shades lighter. So just remember that. Here are our upcycled shoes. This is a pair of shoes I had in my cupboard. And you can see here, we actually dyed this lace, but this could be an embroidery design. This lovely little lace flower is embroidered. You could add three or four of these around the front with our ribbons behind them. And you can see in the next slide coming up that we even put the little lace flowers on the heels of the shoes. Decorated shoes are all the fashion these days. I cannot believe when you go onto Pinterest and you see these outrageously expensive shoes and lavish shoes. They have embroidery, they have feathers, they have lace, they have beading, they have crystals. It is just amazing um, what they have and we can do it ourselves. Um, by just upcycling our own shoes. And you can see this is a close-up. This is one of my old Canadian maple syrup bottles and I've spray painted it and we put this lovely little la um, label on the front of it. It's a little um, dress form decked up and you can see I have some drop beads with the header covered with lovely um, embroidered little daisies and my old lace and strips of organza and tulle um, cut on the bias tied together are lovely inexpensive gifts and they really look fabulous when they're finished. I'm taking a breath ladies. 
Um, our next slide is probably my favourite bottle. String wrapped around the top and glued. By the way, all the labels are treated with what you call Mod Podge or we call it PVA glue. Uh, we water the PVA glue down slightly, glue your labels on and then you paint the um, Mod Podge over the top of them. This feels them, gives them a shine and it dries clear. Um, but you get all the directions on your ebook, and this is a, a beautiful um, three-dimensional organza flower that we put on the side. And you can see the lovely colour that the tea and coffee mixture dyed the lace around the edge of the label, and the, that was actually white. Now this slide, you can see a close-up here of my synthetic lace by the yard fabric lace that I have used and a close up of, we use slightly different coloured laces here for our piecing um, around the centre, I just went too quick there, around the centre um, square on point we gathered up lace, we just glued that on and the beads and then our lovely little lace flowers and lace flowers in the middle, a lovely pillow and our special ribbon ruching up. Have any of you got old beads that you no longer use or they're too short? Well, you can transform them into a stunning, beautiful new neck decoration by extending your beads with ribbons and then adding this lovely little um, flower cluster at the side with um, drops of ribbon and tulle and lovely little flowers. And the centre is an old brooch that I had for many, many years. I think I was about 16, so it's pretty much vintage now, guys. So this is another great gift idea and something that you can recycle what you have in your home. Another thought on happiness. Happiness is a butterfly. When pursued, is always just beyond your grasp, but which, if you sit down quietly, may alight upon you. So really, sometimes we search for things so hard that we miss the beautiful things that could make us happy. I try to think of what one of my friends has on her phone when she leaves a message if you miss her call, and it says, and decide, and decide to have a happy, beautiful day. The mind is a very powerful thing. We are what we say we are. So I wanted to quickly go through embroidered decoupage for those of you who are not familiar with it. This is embroidered um, applique decoupage. The actual size of the flower is an 11 inch square. Do not panic. Even if you have a small hoop, you can, I am going to show you how you too can embroider this stunning um, embroidered padded applique flower. These designs, by the way, come from the I Feel Pretty design set and you can also change the colours in these. You can do all sorts of fun, fun things with these designs. For those who have a 200mm by 360mm millimetre hoop availability, then you will need to embroider two designs to create each flower one each of either designs 01A and 01B or 02A and 02B. This is 01 and it's the A, 01 and 02A. Now for those of you who have a 200 by 140 millimetre hoop availability, it's one of the older hoops but I know a lot of you have this size hoop, you too can do this glorious flower. You will need to embroider four designs, three each of either 01C or 01D, and this is this design, and you need to embroider one each of 01D or 02D. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can choose to do it directly onto your fabric if you wish. 
um, using template magic for positioning your designs. If you want to do the embroidered decoupage, that is the easiest. And for this we used Cutaway Magic and Organza hooped together with our Grip It frame. The Grip It frame, if you don't have one, then I suggest you make it. I have given the directions to make that in a place in the sun and many other times. So I've gone ahead here and told you how what you need to select and I always use my basting stitch to hold the two layers of fabric together. And of course we stitch our bud, our bud insert fabric and cut it away and then we do our leaves followed on. I am trying to move through this quickly as a lot of this is repeated and I do suggest you get these really lovely little titanium um, scissors. Nice sharp points and the secret of when you're cutting away fabric for applique is to hold this with your thumb and finger of the opposite side to cutting have a little tension of it on the fabric and then the scissors are so sharp they will just literally glide through your fabric. We are using silk here so of course we've got Sheer Magic Plus on the back of our silk which adds a thread count to our silk as well as um, adding, um, preventing fraying. So of course we do our leaves, cut them out and then we do our cover stitch for our leaves. And for those of you who have the larger hoops, you'll do the bud and flower at each end of the design. For those who have the smaller hoops, you will just do your bud and flower at one end of your design. Now you can notice we are coming into our background petals now and you can see that not only have we got Sheer Magic Plus, but we've got Quilt Magic behind our um, applique as well. And this gives you a gorgeous raised up effect to the petals. They really look gorgeous. They're, it's easy to cut out. Nothing as, is as good as Quilt Magic. And you get this lovely puffed up effect to your finished embroidered applique. We use this a lot in all our embroidered applique and in the next slide you can see that we have used our top petals with a darker fabric and we just repeat what we have done for the previous appliques. So I'm just going to move quickly through these and once you have finished putting all your fabrics in, then your decorative stitches cover all the fabric. You get a glorious finish to these designs. And when you have finished embroidering your designs, so you will stitch um, design A and design B for the large hoop, you then can place design, I've got to remember this, Design B over Design A, glue the centres together. You only have to glue the centres together and if you are nervous and you really feel you need to do something else, you can stitch them around with Invisa sheer thread. But it isn't necessary. And then you have a beautiful freestanding design that you can apply to anything. Now for our 140 by 200 millimetre hoops, remember you'll have to embroider three of design C and one of design D. You can use exactly the same technique um, as I showed you previously for the larger design. Nothing changes, only the size of the design. And when you have your three designs done, I would cut circles in the middle when you heat cut it out and then glue them together. Glue your three designs together in the centre that are the same and 
finally you add your D design over the centre, glue it together and then if you choose once again you can use Invisia, whoops, Invisia Sheer Thread to stitch it in the middle. You then have this glorious large design, 11 inches square, that you've done on smaller hoops. And also remember if you want to do something smaller you can just stitch out the inner flower should you choose to. So there are lots of creative ideas that you, oh sorry, there must be someone at my door, my little puppy barked, I do apologise, she frightened the daylight out of me. I hope you've got some ideas from this. Remember, happiness is not a destination, it's a way of life. It's like perfection. Perfection is, is, is not what you achieve, it's where you're heading for. So none of us are perfect, we just head that way, try. Happiness is not a destination, it is a way of life, it's a way of life that we can choose. For those of you who do not know that we have a Jenny Haskins Designs One Facebook page, please go and like us on Facebook and you will always be seeing what we're doing. Simon is in the process of making the, these ama this amazing new technique quilt. Again, it's the first for Team JH and I know you will absolutely love it. By the way, um, my Facebook page is Jenny.Gray, G-R-A-Y Haskins, all one word. And I was cleaning out my bookshelves just recently and I found an old book of mine and it was dated 1960, yes I was born then. And in it, it, I opened it up and there in my mum's handwriting was this poem. And I know a lot of you are doggy people and we all think ours is the best and this is the best dog in the world. She's my honey. And at this time we are reminded in the Christian world of the birth of Christ. And maybe this is more an Easter poem than it is a Christmas poem. But in memory of my mum, I did post this on my blog and Facebook, I want to share it with you. I wonder if Christ had a little white dog, all curly and woolly like mine, with two silky ears and a nose round and wet, and two eyes so tender that shine. I'm sure if he had that little white dog, knew right from the first he was God, and needed no proof that Christ was divine, but just worshipped the ground that he trod. I'm afraid that he hadn't because I have read how he prayed in the garden alone, for all his friends and disciples had left him and fled, even Peter, the one called a stone. And oh, I am sure that that little white dog with a heart so tender and warm would never have left him to suffer alone but creeping right under his arm would have licked those dear fingers in agony clasped and counting all favours but loss when they took him away would have trotted behind and followed him right to the cross. We have something here for you and I don't know if I can do it. I'm going to have to get Simon. It's come up blank and I don't seem to have anything on my screen that I can play it. We prepared a special video for you and we don't know if we can use it or not. Ah, here we go. I don't know if you'll hear it but I'll put my phone on speaker so you'll at least hear the music. I'll just put it down. Okay. Oh. Be patient. Get up.
I'm sorry you didn't get to see all the pictures, but we will put it up on Facebook. It's quite fun. We hope you all have the most amazing Christmases, and we will be catching up with you in late January, early February 2013. Oh my God, I never thought I'd live that long. Remember, if you buy all three of the design sets, you do get a discount. They're great Christmas presents, great to go on your Christmas wish list. And don't forget, you can still take advantage of the past five um, Ministry of so um, Sewing modules by purchasing it. And you will get our next one and final for the 2012-13 included in it. So you get six modules in total. And we will be sending out emails for resubscribing for 2013 and 14. Bye.